So one of the hardest cases of recent history would be the Harvey Weinstein in terms of popular opinion or unpopular opinion. So, well, if you continue on that line, uh, what was that? Where does that story take you of taking on this case? Yeah, so I I, I took on the case, and then there was some uh, some uh, a few students at the college. So let me back up. I had yeah. an administrative post at Harvard College, which is a separate entity from the Harvard Law School. Harvard College is the undergraduate portion of Harvard University and the law school is obviously the law school. And I uh, initially was appointed as master of one of the houses. We did a name change five or six years into it and and were called faculty deans. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the houses at Harvard are based on the college system of Oxford and and, and Cambridge. So when uh, students go to Harvard after their first year, they're assigned to a particular house uh, or college, and that's where they live and eat and so forth. And these are undergraduate students. These are undergraduate students. So I was responsible for one of the the, the houses as, as its faculty dean. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's an administrative appointment at the college. And some students who didn't clearly didn't like Harvey Weinstein began to uh, protest uh, about the uh, representation. And from there, it uh, just mushroomed into one of the most craven, cowardly uh, acts by uh, any university in modern history. It's a, a, just a complete and utter repudiation of uh, academic freedom. Uh, and it is a decision that uh, Harvard certainly will live to regret. It's Frankly, it's an embarrassment. Uh, we expect expect students to do what students do. And uh, and I encourage students to have their voices heard and to protest. Uh, I mean, that's what students do. Uh, what is vexing are the adults. Uh, uh, the dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science, uh, Claudine Gay, uh, absolutely craven and cowardly. The dean of the college, same thing, Rakesh Karana, craven and cowardly. Uh, they... Um, capitulated to the loudest voice in the room and ran around afraid of 19 year olds. Oh, my 19 year olds are upset that I, I, I need to, I need to do something. Yeah. And uh, it appeared to me that they so, so desired the approval uh, of students that they were afraid to make uh, the tough decision and the right decision. It really could have been an important teaching exactly. moment A at teaching Harvard. moment. Yeah. Very important teaching moment. So they they forced you to step down from that uh, faculty dean position at the house. It um, I would push back on the description a little bit. So 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 I so I, I don't write the the uh, you know the references to the op ed I did in the New York Times. Yeah. Harvard made a mistake by making me step down or cool. or something like that. So I, I don't write those things. Uh, I did not step down and and refuse to step down. Uh, Harvard declined to renew. My, my 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 contract gotcha. and you know and I made it clear that I, I was not uh, going to resign as a matter of of, of principle and, and and force them to um, do the the cowardly act that they in fact uh, did and you know the 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 worst thing about this uh, they did uh, the college uh, uh, Dean Gay and Dean Karana uh, commissioned this survey. They've never done this before. Survey from the students, you know, how do you feel at Winthrop House? Yeah. And the funny thing about the survey is they never released the results. Uh-huh. Why did they never release the results? They never released the results because I would bet my salary that the results came back positive for me and it didn't fit their narrative because most of the students were fine. Yes. Most of the students were fine. It was the the loudest voice in the room. So they never released it. And, you know, I challenge them to this day. Release it. Yes. Release it. Yeah, but no. But, you know, they wanted to uh, uh, create this narrative. Uh, and um, when the data didn't support the narrative, then they just got got silent. Oh, we're, 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 we're not going to release it. The students demanded it. I demanded it. And they wouldn't release it because I am, I, I just, I just know in my heart of hearts that it, it was, um, uh, it came back in my favor that most students at Winthrop House said they were fine. Um, it, there was a group of students that weaponized a, a, a term uh, unsafe. They said we felt unsafe, and they, and they 
uh, bantied uh, this term about. Uh, but I'm again, I'm confident that that the majority of students at Winthrop House said they felt completely uh, fine and the uh, felt safe and so forth. And the super majority, I am confident, either said I feel great at at Winthrop. Or, you know, I don't care one way or the other. And then there was some minority who had had a different view. But, um, you know, uh, lessons learned. Uh, I um, It was a, a wonderful opportunity at Winthrop. I met some amazing students over the uh, my 10 years as master and then faculty uh, dean. And I'm still in touch with a number of students, uh, some of whom are now my students at the at, at the law school. So uh, in the end, uh, I thought it was a uh, it, it ended up being a great uh, experience. Uh, the national media was just wonderful in this, just wonderful. They uh, people wrote such wonderful articles and accounts and wagged their finger appropriately at Harvard. Uh, uh, compared me to John Adams, which I don't think is an apt <laughs> comparison, but it's always great to, to read something like that. Uh, yeah. But but at any rate, that 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 was the Harvard uh, the Harvard. Uh, versus Harvey uh, situation. So that that seems like a seminal mistake by Harvard, and Harvard is one of the great universities in the world. And so, sort of, its successes and its mistakes are really important for the world uh, as a beacon of like where, how we make progress. So, what lessons for the bigger academia that get that's under fire a lot these days? Uh, what bigger lessons do you? take away? Like, how do we make Harvard great? How do we make uh, other universities, Yale, MIT, great in the face of such mistakes? Well, I think that we have moved into a model where we, the, the, we have the consumerization of education. Uh, that is to say, we have feckless administrators uh, who make policy based on what the students say. Um, now, this comment is not intended to suggest that students have no voice in governance, but it is to, to suggest that the faculty are there for a reason. They are among the greatest minds on the planet Earth in their particular fields at schools like Harvard and, and Yale, Stanford, the schools that you mentioned, MIT, quite literally the greatest minds on earth. They're there for a reason. Uh, things like uh, curriculum and so forth uh, are rightly in the province of faculty. And while you take input and critique and so forth, ultimately the grown-ups in the room have to be sufficiently responsible to take, uh, to, to take charge and to uh, direct the course of a student's education. And um, you know, you know, my situation is one example where it really could have been an excellent teaching moment about the value of the Sixth Amendment, about what it means to treat, um, what it means to treat people who are in the crosshairs of the criminal justice system. But rather than having that conversation, um, it's just this consumerization model. Uh, well, there's a lot of noise out here, so we're going to react in this sort of way. Higher education as well, unfortunately, has been commodified in other uh, sorts of ways that has reduced or, or impeded, hampered uh, these schools' commitments to uh, free and robust and open dialogue. So to the degree that academic freedom uh, doesn't sit squarely at the center of the academic mission, uh, any school is going to be in trouble. And I really hope that uh, um, that we weather this current political moment where uh, 19 year olds without degrees are running universities and get back to a a system where um, faculty, where adults make decisions in the best interests of the university, in the best interests of the student, even to the degree though some of those decisions may be uh, uh, unpopular. And that uh, is going to require a certain uh, courage um, and Hopefully, 
in time, and I'm confident that in time, um, administrators are going to begin to push back on these current trends. Uh, Harvard's been around for a long time. It's been around for a long time for a reason. And one of the reasons is that it uh, understands itself not to be static. So I have every uh, view um, that uh, Harvard is is going to adapt and get itself back on course and be around another 400 years. At least that's my hope. <laughs> so, I mean, what this kind of boils down to is just having difficult conversation, difficult debates. Uh, when you mentioned sort of 19 year olds, and it's funny, I've seen this even at MIT, it's not that uh, they shouldn't have a voice. They, should, should, they, they do seem to, I guess you have to experience it and just observe it. They have a strangely disproportionate power. Right. Right. It's very interesting to uh, to basically. I mean, you say yes, there's great faculty and so on, but you know, uh, it's not even just that the faculty is smart or wise or whatever. It's that they're just silenced. Uh, 